Hi, I'm Rajiv, and tonight I would like to encourage you all to read aloud to the ones you love. A few months ago, I went to Paris with a couple of friends. We rented an apartment, and uh, we spent almost every day outside painting. But in the evenings, after dinner, we would go back to the apartment, we would light candles, and we started reading aloud to each other. Jack was reading a book about the history of coffee, so he read from that book. Laura was reading a book about the secret life of trees, and I was reading Leo Tolstoy's short stories, so that's what I read from. It was so special that we started getting excited about finishing dinner and rushing home so that we could get in a bit of reading before we went to bed. And it left me with a reminder of how special it is to spend quality time with the people that you love by actually doing something with them. Reading aloud to your loved ones, reading aloud to people you care about is a classic, classic way of showing someone that you care about them or that you love them. It's also very, very romantic. You get a book, a long book that you love, you create a ritual of having your, your beloved put their head on your lap every evening and read aloud to them. It's something that I've done in the past and I'm so glad that I took the time to do that with someone I cared about. I also read aloud uh, to my mom. I read my mom To Kill a Mockingbird one entire summer, almost every evening. My sisters would sometimes sit around um, and listen as well. And it was wonderful. I think back to all of the hours that it took to read that book. And I just think, what a great, great way to have spent time with my mom. So, I want you all to try. I want you all to try with maybe a short story. And then maybe if you like it, if you enjoy doing that, move on to something much longer. It's, it's really, really, really encouraging to know that people that you care about are actually attentive to what you're saying when you're reading from a book. Um, I'd love to read you something tonight, something short from one of my favorite books, a childhood book. It's actually called Favorite Greek Myths. And I've bookmarked this to a story that I love very, very much. This is Apollo's tree. Apollo's tree, the story of Daphne and Apollo. One day when Apollo, the god of light and truth, was a young man, he came upon Cupid, the god of love, playing with one of his bows. What are you doing with my bow? Apollo asked angrily. Don't try to steal my glory, Cupid. I've slain a great serpent with that weapon. Play with your own little bow and arrows. Your arrows may slay serpents, Apollo, said the god of love, but my arrows can do worse harm. Even you can be wounded by them. With that ominous threat, Cupid flew into the sky and landed on top of a high mountain. Then he pulled two arrows from his quiver. One had a blunt tip filled with lead. Whomever was hit by this arrow would run from anyone professing love. The second arrow was sharp and made of gold. Whomever was hit by this arrow would instantly fall in love. Cupid aimed his first arrow at Daphne, a beautiful nymph hunting deep in the woods. Daphne was a follower of Diana, Apollo's twin sister and goddess of wild things. Like Diana, Daphne loved her freedom as she roamed the woods and fields with her hair in wild disarray and her limbs bare to the sun and rain. Cupid pulled the bowstring back and shot the blunt tip arrow at Daphne. When the arrow flew through the air, it became invisible. And when it pierced Daphne's heart, she felt a sharp pain, but knew not why. Holding her hands over her wound, Daphne rushed to her father, the river god. Father, she shouted, you must make me a promise. What is it, called the god who stood in the river, surrounded by water nymphs. Promise I will never have to get married, Daphne cried. The river god, confused by his daughter's frantic request, called back, 
but I wish to have grandchildren. No, father, no, I never want to get married. Please, let me always be as free as Diana. But I want you to marry, cried the god. No, screamed Daphne, and she beat the water with her fists, then rocked back and forth and sobbed. All right, shouted the river god. Do not grieve so, Daphne. I promise I'll never make you marry. And promise you'll help me escape my suitors, cried the huntress. I promise I will, cried the river god. After Daphne secured this promise from her father, Cupid aimed his second arrow, the sharp gold-tipped one, at Apollo, who was wandering in the woods. Just as the young god came across Daphne, Cupid pulled back the tight string of his bow and shot the golden arrow into Apollo's heart. The god instantly fell in love with Daphne. Even though the huntress's hair was wild and she wore only rough animal skins, Apollo thought she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Hello, he cried, but Daphne gave him a startled look, then bolted into the woods like a deer. Apollo ran after her, shouting, Stay! Stay! But Daphne fled as fast as the wind. Don't run, please, cried Apollo. You flee like a dove flees an eagle, but I'm not your enemy. Don't run from me. Daphne continued to run. Stop, Apollo cried. Daphne did not slow down. Do you know who I am? said the god. I am not a farm boy or a shepherd. I am lord of Delphi, son of Jupiter. I've slain a great serpent with my arrow. But alas, I fear Cupid's weapons have wounded me worse. Daphne continued to run, her bare limbs lit by the sun and her soft hair wild in the wind. Apollo grew tired of begging her to stop, so he began to pick up speed. On the wings of love, running more swiftly than he'd ever run before, the god of light and truth gave the girl no rest, until soon he was close upon her. Her strength gone, Daphne could feel Apollo's breath on her hair. Help me, father, she cried to the river god. Help me! No sooner had she spoken these words than her arms and legs grew heavy and turned to wood. Then her hair became leaves and her feet became roots growing deep into the ground. She had become a laurel tree and nothing was left of her but her exquisite loveliness. Apollo embraced the tree's branches as if they were Daphne's arms. He kissed her wooden flesh. Then he pressed his hands against the tree's trunk and wept. I feel your heart beating beneath this bark, Apollo said, tears running down his face. Since you can't be my wife, you'll be my sacred tree. I'll use your wood for my harp and for my arrows. I'll weave your branches into a wreath for my head. Heroes and scholars will be crowned with your leaves. You'll always be young and green, my first love, Daphne.